World record. World speed record set by 50 cubic centimeter Kreidler motorcycle. How easy it sounds. Only those close to the project, the constructor, the mechanics, and last but not least, the racer, know what went into it. The hours, the patience, the setbacks, the guts. They say out west, salt made Wendover, and with good reason, for Wendover grew up with the growing importance of the crusty salt flats. The greatest racing drivers of our day congregate there at the Bonville Salt Flats in Utah to establish their world records, shooting across the flats in super vehicles propelled by turbo and rocket engines, they reach for the golden crown breaking speed record after speed record. The most famous names at the present time are the Americans, Breedlove and the Arfons brothers. It was in 1956 when the well-known German racing champion, H.P. Müller, riding a 50cc NSU machine, reached 196 kilometers per hour, over one mile and one kilometer, establishing a sensational world record. Two years ago, encouraged by the number of successes at Grand Prix races, Kreidler decided to try to better that mark. The aerodynamic shape of our motorcycle we developed from an idea by an Italian designer living in Argentina, Fefro Mayo. After much thought, and especially for reasons of safety, we agreed on the Bonville Flats as the most suitable site for our trials. Intense preparations must precede any attempt for a world record. Countless tests and continuous experiments Exact measurements in wind tunnels and on test stands are the prerequisites for success. The engines used by us in Utah, for instance, delivered 15 din horsepower at 15,000 RPMs. This enabled our engines to reach exactly 300 din horsepower per liter, a measure of effectiveness never attained before by any combustion engine. Technical calculations and many months of tests under the most exacting circumstances encouraged us to go ahead with the project. But numerous problems cropped up in Utah, which we had not foreseen in Germany. One of them was the ever-changing consistency of the salt and its effect on the roadability of the vehicle, and with it, the safety of the man racing it. For these reasons, it was decided to make a series of tests with a Grand Prix machine to acquaint the driver with the unfamiliar salt surface. Only then did it seem advisable to put the machine destined for the record run through its paces on the track. Extensive rainfall, however, turned the flats into a sheer, endless sea. All further tests on the salt had to be discontinued for the time being. We moved to a nearby concrete runway. Preparations began for an attempt at the 50cc class world records over a mile and over a quarter mile from a standing start. For the vehicle, we used a Grand Prix machine stripped of all unnecessary ballast and especially geared for high speeds. The machine is equipped with a 50cc double rotary slide valve two-stroke engine of about 12.5 din horsepower at around 12,500 RPMs, 
A sort of supercharge is attained by a swinging gas column in the pear-shaped muffler. The vehicle has 12 gears. Rudolf Kuntz, an experienced racer, was the man to do the job. After a series of trial runs devoted mainly to practicing quick and efficient gear shifting, Kuntz succeeded in breaking the world record over one mile with a standing start. His time, 108.28 kilometers per hour. The quarter mile constituted an entirely new discipline. Rudolf Kuntz reached 73.95 kilometers per hour, and thus his name was inscribed in the world record book, the first time for anybody at that distance. After a few days, the weather improved. We returned once more to the salt flats and looked for a course which would be suitable for extensive test runs. The track for the record run itself was still closed down. With the continuous rise and fall of the humidity, and the ever-changing air temperatures, morning, noon, and evening, it was not always easy to find the correct carburetor adjustment. The altitude of about 4,200 feet above sea level also had to be taken into account. was cooled with ice water. Ice cubes were carried along in a plastic container. For safety reasons, the first test runs on the salt were carried out with the cockpit roof open. Besides, two legs had to be attached to the sides of the body to prevent the vehicle from falling when not in motion. Since the whole machine is only 30 inches high, the man inside has to crouch and steer on his knees. The first test runs are satisfactory, but there are a few minor problems. Salt gathers on the inside of the small windshield and around the engine. Now the vehicle goes back to the workshop to be prepared for the next step. runs with the cockpit half closed and then completely shut. Subsequent trial runs show no hitches. The interior alterations to prevent damage from flying salt particles proved to be adequate. So far, it has not been possible to use the official timekeeping instruments for the trial runs. The timing in the United States, as in Europe, 
is done by electronic instruments accurate to one one hundredth of a second. The timing stand and its staff were provided by the Automobile Club of America. We'd like to express our thanks right here for their reliability and for their faultless equipment. And while we're at it, special praise for those who kept the speedway in top condition. However, some difficulties remain with the cockpit. It still does not close tight. More and more now, the test runs are beginning to look like the real thing, an attempt at the world record. The starting operation is practiced and perfected. Higher and higher speeds are achieved. At first, the accompanying vehicles can keep up with the low-slung red cigar, but soon they are left behind. Four weeks have passed. Nine years ago, it took NSU about seven weeks to get its world records on the books. The crew is getting impatient. Racing conditions are not improving. Too many other machines are working out on the same course. Another short period of bad weather sets in. We have to wait a few more days. Because of the dry weather, the salt conditions have improved, and now the Cridler crew awaits with confidence the opening of the speedway. Motorcycles are attracting an ever-growing number of sport fans. They follow with keen interest as world records tumble in all categories. And they were there in October 1965 when it happened in the 50 cubic centimeter class. We of Cridlers are proud to have been able to make our contribution toward the introduction of these tiny giants in international racing competitions and their increasing acceptance by the public. You never lack curious spectators at Wendover, or pretty girls. But they seem, more often than not, less interested in the machines than in the men who race them. Finally, everything is ready. Rudolf Kuntz is pushed to the starting point, and then he's off. At breathtaking speed, he passes the control points, and it's confirmed by walkie-talkie. The electric timer registers the first try at 193.487 kilometers per hour over the mile, and 196.937 over the kilometer.
start in one hour. So far, the results are not quite good enough. What went wrong? Chief Constructor Hans Hilbe has only one explanation. The ice in the cooling system cut down the engine's power. The decision? No more ice. And there goes Rudolf Kuntz again on the return run. Now the machine roars at full speed along its course. Faster than before. How much faster? That's the question. Seconds later, the message is relayed over the walkie-talkie. On his return run, Kuntz has attained the unbelievable speed of 225.342 kilometers per hour over the one-mile course and 224.330 kilometers per hour over the one-kilometer course. New world records have been set. They are, for one mile with a flying start, 209.215 kilometers per hour, and for one kilometer with flying start, 210.634 kilometers per hour. jubilation of the entire Kreidler crew greets Rudolf Kuntz. In the evening, a celebration is in order, and thanks to all who contributed so much to the success of the adventure. But thanks are also due to our American friends whose lively interest in the midget among the giants made these records possible. The following world records were newly established in Utah in 1965. Standing start, one quarter mile, 73.95 kilometers per hour. Standing start, one mile, 108.28 kilometers per hour. Standing start, 10 kilometers, 180.785 kilometers per hour. Flying start, one kilometer, 210.634 kilometers per hour. Flying start, one mile, 209.215 kilometers per hour. All the records were established by world champion Rudolf Kuntz. Added to this should be the world records established by Hans-Georg Anscheidt on a Kreidler. From a standing start over one kilometer in these categories, 50 cc, 75 cc, and 100 cc. Speed attained, 110.497 kilometers per hour. At the present time, therefore, Kreidler holds eight motorcycle world records.